asked me a couple years ago whether I'd be standing up here talking to you about rape culture? I don't know. I probably would have just laughed. For one, I couldn't imagine standing up on a stage like this. And two, I probably would have struggled to define what exactly rape culture is. But if you'd asked me if I believed in women's rights, I would have proudly said yes. And if you'd asked me if I believed in human rights, I would have shouted out my conviction. At the age of 11, I cared about something. The same thing that I care about today and feel the need to tell you why you should care too. Rape culture. Rape culture is defined as a systematically rooted judgment towards rape victims and society's acceptance of sexual assault. This doesn't make sexual assault okay. It implies that we live in a society that has been desensitized and often encourage sexual assault. Growing up, I faced challenges that my brothers simply didn't have to face. I was in grade one, the first time someone told me what I couldn't wear. For some reason or another, I pulled my shirt down over my shoulders, and my teacher came and pulled me aside. She told me that wearing my shirt like that made me look slutty, and that I didn't want to attract that kind of negative attention towards myself. I was in grade one. Of course, even being in grade one, I didn't want to look slutty, now did I? So I fixed my shirt. I was in grade one. All this really did was give me a weird view that shoulders were such a risque body part. But it also stuck in my head. I wondered if boys my age were being told what not to wear. Fast forward a couple years, and it's grade seven. It was a fall afternoon when it was starting to get dark a little earlier. I was walking home from school when a truck started to slowly drive past me. He called out compliments, or as I now know, harassment, as I walked closer. He started to ask me for directions and then tried to grab a hold of my arm. I yanked my arm away and ran the rest of the way home. After that, I never made any eye contact with drivers on the street. It was to my knowledge that none of my male friends had this happen to them. As middle school went on, I started to hit the dress coding phenomenon Shorts in the summer were simply not my friends. As the heat arrived, so did the teachers to judge the length of girls' shorts as they walked into class. Like any eighth grader, I was horrified as I was continuously asked to change. And even worse, when I tried to get longer shorts and failed. I don't know when the last time you were in Abercrombie was, but good luck trying to find appropriate length shorts. So as I was once again told that I didn't want my clothes to suggest anything about my sexuality, I realized that my shorts weren't really saying anything and that I was comfortable. I became very aware of how unfair it was that we were deemed distraction in class and our shorts were being measured. I thought that we were a lot more important than simply bare legs. I was starting to subconsciously piece together things that I didn't really understand. My mother made sure to tell me the story of how she whacked a man senseless when alone walking. My doctor advised me to take certain precautions because, quote unquote, I was an easy target. So while my brothers could do as they pleased with their allowance, I had to spend all of mine on cabs because I couldn't bus or subway alone at night. Why was it only me that was being told what I couldn't wear, what I couldn't do? At first, I thought none of this was fair. But then I was hit by common sense. When I was in grade nine, I was walking home after leaving a party. My guy friends offered to walk me home, but I said no, because it was out of the way. I was alone and small. Two men approached me and started to harass me. They said I should be coming home with them to have some fun. I refused and tried to keep walking. Suddenly, one of the men picked me up and threw me over his shoulder. I started screaming as they started running. A man from a nearby restaurant saw the whole thing and came running out. The guy spooked and dropped me. I remember being scared, 
But mostly, I remember thinking that there is nothing, nothing I could do. So maybe it was at that moment when a stranger hugged me and wiped away my tears that I realized I didn't want this to be normal. It's a fact that many, many people undergo street harassment, random groping, and many more have stories just like these. I don't even look at this as my own experiences as abnormal. It's just the reason why I don't walk home alone at night. This is what makes me care. This is why I'm here. The experiences that I've gone through are something that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Why are we looking at rape culture like it's something we must just accept and change our lifestyles to avoid? That's awful and unfair. The older I get, the more rape culture seems to be everywhere, and the more I understand it. Rape culture is prominent, and every single person in this room is involved in it. We have all been socialized into a society that accepts, normalizes, and adds humor to sexual assault. How can we even expect equality when there is such a difference between the acceptance of male and female sexuality? Girls are viewed in such a negative way for their sexual identity, and boys are seen as impressive and or experienced. Because of this, I've seen girls hating other girls after they stumble out of a room, and I've seen guys high-fiving other guys after finally sleeping with someone. Is it just plain ignorance? After all, the only time my friends and I really learned about sex was in a laughable health class, where all I really did was learn how to not get pregnant. Maybe you were lucky enough to sit through an awkward conversation with your parents, but that's not all that likely. Growing up, I felt that nobody really wanted to talk sex with us teenagers, just get swept under the carpet like it's not happening at all. But it is happening. And not enough people know what is and what isn't okay. In my social justice class, we were given the opportunity to choose a social injustice and to do some research. I decided to focus on rape culture and how it affects us teenagers. I had never been more shocked in my entire life I scrolled through story after story where victims who had the courage to act were doubted, degraded, and some were even driven to suicide. Why do we doubt these women? Steubenville, Ohio, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. They shocked the world with stories where victims were stripped, raped, while unconscious, and then they were told that it was their fault. This is the same issue that people make jokes about. Miami University published a jokes flyer called How to Get Away with Rape. A 2010 chant at Yale included no means yes and yes means anal. Finally, perhaps the most shocking of all, St. Mary's and Halifax chant reading, Y is for your sister, O is for oh so tight, U is for underage, N is for no consent. And it continues. These are our universities. They should be fixing the assumptions made in high school. All I want is for people to not ask what the victim was wearing, their sexual history, if they had been drinking. Is that really too much to ask? One in four women will experience sexual assault in their lifetime, half before they are 24. So why do I care? Why am I standing up here? Because teenage girls come up with a backup plan when they're out with friends, just in case a guy doesn't stop when she says no. Because telling only girls that we can't do things doesn't solve anything. Because not enough guys are being taught to respect girls' bodies. Because I am a lot more than just someone to sleep with. Because girls like me are targeted and forced into horrible situations. Myself, my friends, your kids, are heading off to the universities where the problem is only getting worse. We are all affected. Not just your sons, not just your daughters and your nieces, but your sons. Boys are being viewed with fear in a way that suggests they're all potential rapists. This is our society and it makes me physically sick. So, we as men and women need to be able to work together for gender equality to fix these issues. I'm standing up here for grade one students who feel confused. 
to grade eight students who are ashamed over their bare legs, to grade nine students who are scared of strangers, to young boys that are assumed to be predators, to girls who feel like nobody will believe them, to the men that thought they could get away with taking a teenage girl home. We all deserve to live together equally and safely. I hope that I'll never again have to feel as helpless as I did when those men tried to pick me up. But mostly, I hope that nobody will ever have to feel that way again. Nobody should feel scared to live. Nobody should ever cry for rape culture ever again. Each one of you in this room is already one step closer to making a change. Understanding our role in rape culture helps break down societal barriers. I offer you all an invitation to care just a little bit more. We can't live our lives in constant fear. Let's make a change. Thank you.